Welcome to the Projector Tool Training. In this video, I want to show you our new JavaScript editor and the way we are managing JavaScript files now. As you can see, I have created uh, an empty new project and you can already see here, there is a new entry, JavaScript. So from now on, JavaScript that are used in the project will be listed in the project tree. So you always have a nice overview and control over what scripts are being used. You can create a new script by right clicking on the JavaScript entry. You can import files from other projects. Um, if you have other projects open, what you also can do is just select JavaScript files, copy them, control C, click here and then uh, control V or right click and paste. So you can move them around very quickly. Let's create a new file. Here you have uh, the possibility to select one of the samples that we provide. These are just some simple uh, functionality samples, decreasing, increasing variable values, a simple hello world functions, an on project init template file, and an example how to move um, files from data logging from the device to the USB stick. So just some simple functionalities. You can expect this to grow uh, with every version as we think of new interesting examples that we can provide you with. For now, let's just create an empty JavaScript. Here you can give it a name. Um, I will leave the name as it is now, but of course you should name the file as you want. And here we already have our new JavaScript editor as it looks. Um, it is a real editor now. Um, the other one was uh, a little bit limited in functionality. Um, this one here is actually a complete full um, editor. So um, a very interesting thing is if you press control and space, you will get a list of all available functions and keywords in available in JavaScript. Please take this with a grain of salt. If you scroll down this list, you will see that there are a lot of uh, commands and keywords that are not in included in our JavaScript engine. So please take this with a grain of salt. But especially here in the beginning, um, we have our functions, our own functions that we uh, uh, added to the JavaScript. And those you can definitely use. And it's very good and great to have them all here listed up. And if you go through them, you can see down here a little uh, piece of documentation for uh, each of the functions. So let's say uh, you want to use send can message. You can see what it does. It sends a can message. Okay, that was available in the command. And you have all the parameters listed. And if you press enter or double click, it will uh, pre fill out the code. And as you can see, the code is also checked right now because the uh, placeholders for all the parameters, um, the uh, editor interprets them as global variables that are not declared. So it warns you that this is happening. So let's say you have another script where you have defined all of these variables, then it's okay. That's why this, it is not an error but still um, it will warn you, it will, it will tell you that, so, that something uh, is not completely correct within this script file. Um, let's remove this. Um, it can al also help you um, to give you a complete, uh, um, yeah, f functionality. I will, I will give you an example. Let's say I want to make for loop. I type for and press uh, um, control and space and I have the uh, possibility to select um, some uh, pre pre written code. Let's see here. So it, it uh, pre populates my for loop. It basically everything is ready now. I just have to uh, to change maybe the maximum number and uh, put in the code that I want to execute. Um, it also shows you a, a error. So let's say I will, well, I want to use a switch command. Um, 
the switch is not ready by just typing switch. That's why I get an, uh, a red error now. And it says that um, a bracket is expect expected, but it found end of file. Because of course, uh, let me uh, add a variable so that we can do some things. Have you seen? Once I have written the bracket, uh, once I opened the brackets, it, it added uh, a close brackets. So now it expects an operand, so it wants to have a variable. And uh, what we can do is we can take this variable, drag and drop it here, and of course we want to get the variable value because we want to switch depending on the vari uh, value of this variable. Okay, we still get an error because the semicolon has been added, so this one we have to remove. But otherwise it really should be good. Oh yes, it expected um, this bracket. Where is it? Right here. Um, and it should, yes, if I press enter it should also uh, close it for me. So now um, the editor is happy, but of course this doesn't uh, do any functions, so in reality I would uh, uh, add some code. Something like that. And break. Um, but you can see that the, uh, the editor is much more powerful than the old one. You have access to all the variables. So at any point you can just drag this in and choose set or get variable and um, you can use the functionality. You can also, let me do this and maybe this. So now I've created a very simple page with a, with a string field in it and now I go back to my JavaScript and I can drag and drop the string field in here and I can choose the functions that are available according to this object. So I can read a property, I can write a property, or I can move the object. Let's click move uh, DDO. So now it already has uh, put in the ID of the parent object of the frame and of the object itself. And it uh, added placeholders for the new variable that, uh, uh, that I have to change to move the object to another position. So it really helps very much uh, coding. And now let's do this the other way. Let's say I want to execute this code by the press of a button. And the old way would be I go to events, check on release, no action, execute script. And now I can choose the script file. You can still do that as you can see. But a much nicer way is I can take my JavaScript file and drag and drop it here. I can say, okay, I want to execute it on, on release and I'm done. So that's a very great help and uh, it completely changes the workflow and makes things much easier. A last addition I want to show is our visual programming. You see this button here. Normally you, when the editor opens, it will always open in the source view. So you can edit your source code as you're used to. Um, but when you click on this button, it would change the view completely and it will have give you a visual representation of the code that you have created. So we have our for loop here and we have our switch command with one case, case zero, and we have uh, our set variable value and the move DDO function. Uh, a very nice feature is the um, display of the McCabe uh, complexity. You can read about uh, what that means exactly, um, but in general I can tell you it's um, a way to see is my code uh, too complex to be maintained, to be tested well. Um, so basically if this goes to yellow or especially red and especially in a cyclic script, um, you should take a hard look on your code and see if you can uh, reduce it a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. So you can not only um, view your current code, but you could even uh, add new code right here. Let's put 
an if else uh, in here I can drag and drop a variable right here and it will um, automatically include uh, the get variable value function just as in the source code and um, it gets a it's it, it's it needs a bit a little bit of getting used to because it's a, a strange view but especially if you're uh, not a good programmer it can be nice to see the code in that way to see the structure a little bit you also have here a little overview of the code so you can collapse things and only take a look at what you want to know so um, another thing by default um, this uh, visual programming is set to read only so any changes that it makes when restructuring the code um, will be discarded when you click back um, if you if you actually want to add code in the, in the visual programming you of course have to disable the read only and then if you go back um, you will see here it has transformed the visual um, if else that I put here um, to actual code so that's a nice new way to look at, at, at your programming code and I hope you have fun programming and thank you for watching